With me in the studio is Mrs Johnson, who lives in Newquay Road in Knoll. She, as many of you will know, is the brains behind a petition organised in the Knoll and Knoll West area just recently, asking for a better and a more reliable bus service. Mrs Johnson is anxious that people shouldn't think she has a battle with the bus company. Would you have expressed it like that, Mrs Johnson? Well, first of all, I would like to say it's not the brains, I lack them. A lot of people would say funny woman with a funny nose. But as regards fighting the bus company or anybody else, I personally started this, I personally am very, very anxious. Everybody realises this is no fight. This is just to try to relieve some of the hardship, to relieve the pressures, frustrations and what have you, the lack of a good service is putting on people. How did it all begin then? Um, well, it began, I was like hundreds and hundreds of other people in Knoll, across Bristol, standing around, waiting in definite periods, trying to get to various places, grumbling, um, saying if only we could do something about it and all the rest of it. This went on for two and a half years consecutively, other than, you know, odd um, occasions. And one day I thought, well, you know, I'm a bit of a fool, but nobody else is doing anything constructive about it from where I sit, so I'll try. So you thought you'd do something rather than go on complaining? Well, I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't even getting on the bus that way, you know, so... Um, and what happened next? Um, I didn't give it much thought. I realised how I felt. I realised that there were a lot of people felt the same as I felt. So um, I also realised somewhere along the line, somebody may say, what right have you to speak for anybody other than yourself? So um, I went to the people that... I had stood shoulder to shoulder with at the bus stops who had gone through hardships through not being able to get children from school, through some of them had to give up work ultimately because, you know, part-time jobs because they couldn't um, get a reliable bus service. They were wasting too much time away from their homes. Um, these people I felt knew what they were talking about. I knew that they were talking about it because what they knew what they were talking about because I had been with, with them. them. So I said to them, I thought of getting up a petition. Did they agree with this? He said they did. So originally I followed that up with collecting their names and the names of in the region of 4,000 people in Knoll. 4,000? 4, 4,000. Was it difficult to get as many as that? I'd like to say it was, but definitely it wasn't. The position is such that I think anybody who is prepared to do anything at any level to improve the bus service would, you know, find cooperation. And what happened to that petition? Well, that wasn't a petition proper. That was um, me Tatty housewife, office cleaner, mother of three from the Knoll estate, uh, trying to find out if, you know, she would be acceptable to the people to try and do something because they were desperate for something to be done, but nobody had got to the point of actually doing something. So that then did give me, let's say, the courage. Yes. You know, yes. and the support that something is needed. Well, the feasible way of starting to do anything from where I sat at that point was there are two sides of the bus company as you know the bus service as everybody knows this is the city council and Bristol on the bus company or national bus company what have you so um, a petition to both or yes. to the city council which ultimately comes to the transport committee now let's get um, this straight the transport committee are the, the the body that controls the bus service are they yes they are I believe I understand um, composed of six councillors and six people from the bus side of I see things. sort of a joint committee that's right and the fact they are a joint committee they are the two people that I thought was you know yes. we should approach first and ask for help and this is what the petition is this is what it always has been is asking for help so you're not just having a go at the drivers or the bus company or or the union you're trying far from it very very far from it because what there is a meeting in Noel I'm pleased to say this is with the help of the bus company. Um, I started by telling you I'm very anxious that nobody will look upon this as a fight against the bus company. We have complaints, thousands of them. This is what it's all about. But also, from where I sit, a lot of people will go to that meeting, I'm sure, and they will complain that a driver at a point did so and so, right? We all know that you get a collection of staff, you will get odd characters, will do odd things. Is, when is this meeting you're talking about? The meeting is tomorrow night. Unfortunately, it is tomorrow night, you know. But so, Thursday night? Thursday night, yes. And where is it? It's at Marywood Boys School, Daventry at, Road, in Knoll. At what time? At 7.30. And who's going to be there from the this users committee you've mentioned or this transport committee from the transport committee well um 
Mr Bill Graves is chairing the meeting. He is the chairman of the Transport Committee. Yes. And then from the bus company um, is Mr Bayliss and Mr Brian Cooper. He is the PRO of the National Bus Company. It has been confirmed that they will be there. And also people in Knowell that are interested as to who will be there, if there will be somebody adequate, you know, on their line of intelligence to, to sort of think, are they going to do anything instructive? So you're hoping that it satisfied. won't... It won't just be a list of moans and complaints, but no. that something constructive will That's come from it. it. Mm -hmm. But may I get back to the bus crews? This, from where I sit, is very, very important, that we have crews on the road now. One of the main problems, and everybody knows the bus company have got problems. We, all right, we've got hardships, but one of the main problems, as they say, is shortage of staff. But from where I sit and from where a lot of people sit, I feel that the way things are going, they are now being made responsible for the lack of service on the road. And there's a ring of aggression across Bristol. These men are being abused. And it does seem unfair that they're only doing a day's work. In return, they retaliate to the public and it results in this ring of aggression, which should be put down. Plus, we should have a bus service, of course. But the crews that are on the road today, are we going to have those crews this time next year? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to be twice as short of crews this time next year and have an even worse bus service? Mm. You well, hope all this will come up at the meeting and be discussed? I certainly do. Calmly. Is there anything else you want to say about the, the whole matter? No, I just hope that, you know, in, in my funny way, I try to do what I can. I'm prepared to do anything from this point on, if necessary. I prefer that there are other people who will be able to take it on from here. Um, who did you find most helpful when you began to to feel strongly about it. Can I embarrass you by saying you? Uh, can you embarrass other people as well? There's um, the heads of the two um, large schools in our area, Mr Davis, Miss Gray. There's also the um, head of the Noel Park Infant School, Miss Hume. Um, Mr Hind, he's the head of the Noel Park Junior School. I don't know, I can't really, you know, name names at this point, but there are a lot of people on that level. A lot of people in the area can say, oh, Mrs Johnson, who's she, you know, she, does she know what she's talking about? Nobody can query the people like Miss Gray and Mr Davis, who are involved, Mr Abrahams are not only a local councillor, a school governor at Merriwood School, but a very active man in the community over a period of roughly 50 years, mm -hmm. and who is interested in the youth of the community and, you know, community so general, lot of all these people involved. do know what they're talking about, even if I don't, you know, and they're in sympathy with the petition, so. Could we finish by asking you if, on the whole, looking back to right to the beginning and where you've got to now, whether you're encouraged by the way things have gone or discouraged? Um, well, I've been told that I feel very pleased that we've got response of any sort from the Transport Committee. Very pleased indeed. Um, I've been told that this meeting won't resolve anything. You know, we can accept this, but at least it will resolve whether, you know, the bus service will improve and I can get back to getting the dust out from under the beds, you know, and, and <laughs> get out on the road and get a bus, or it will possibly make people that are more effective than I am do something about it in a more effective way than I ever possibly could, so that people like me can get on a bus, we can go where we want to go. The elderly people aren't restricted and contained within their areas as they are. And the children can get to the social amenities across the city in preference to as they are now. They, they get frustrated with, you know, it is inadequate, some of the social amenities on in Knoll. Yes. So therefore, the alternative is they become hooligans. What, so in other words, they're going to pay for the lack of a bus service in the so long run. So all these things are tied in with and it, aren't they? I am not expected to pay more for waiting longer to get a Brussels, Bristol bus. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you very much.